He wears the red and black. The former champion brings a veteran professional record with 40 victories, seven defeats, and one draw, 29. Wins by way of knockout. Originally from Armenia, he now fights out of Sydney, Australia. Introducing the challenger, Vic, the Raging Bull, Darchinian. And across the ring, his adversary fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the gold and white, impressive as a professional. 26 wins, only one loss, 20 victories. By way of knockout from Buenos Aires, Argentina, introducing the defending champion, Jesus El Forestero Cuella. Boxer chief second. Boxer chief second. Everyone else out. Give me a glove, Vic. All right, guys, I've given you instructions in the dressing room, all right? Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my commands, all right? Touch them up, back to your corner. Good. This is scheduled good. for 12 rounds. Good. Jesus Cuellar, 28 years Mark. old, record of 26 good. and 120 by knockout is one defeat. Stopped in the seventh round by Oscar Escando. That was October of 2011. As this one gets underway, your quick thoughts on what we just saw, that Guerrero victory. Right, one of the judges, Jerry Cantu, had it 97-92 for Guerrero. All right. well, Eddie Hernandez Ready? had it 95-94 for Guerrero. Pops. And Max DeLuca, 95-94 for Martinez. So what are what your feelings, particularly about the 97-92 decision? I wish you'd judge all my fights. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, the least could have been a draw, at the very least. You know, Marv, on the flip side, I feel like that, you know, 95, 94, either way, I personally had Martinez winning 95, 94, but if it went to Guerrero, you know, by a point, I could see that, but, uh, you know, Martinez was dictating a lot of the action, and, uh, you know, 97, 92, I'm not sure where that score came from. Steve Farhead had a 95, 94 for uh, Guerrero, who was knocked out at round four, then came back strong, and it was on to this featherweight Stop. title fight. Champion Jesus Cuellar in the white get him up. and Vic Darchinian, the southpaw, in the red trunks. Stop, stop. No points. Cuellar, Marv, is known for his good body attack. This guy really knows how to attack the body. From that southpaw stance, he can set that left hand and the right hook both up very nicely. And uh, he knows how to use those punches to his advantage. Darchinian just likes to win by punches, knockouts. I mean, he's, uh, he's really a, a power pack here. And I told him the other yesterday that he can't fight against 39 years old, <laughs> like I like I did. Well, at 39, you would think his career is winding down. 39 is certainly old for any weight class, but they're really old for lighter weight or weight fighters who will peak at a younger stage. Do you guys agree? That's a good point, Marv. Exactly. Victor Chinian, you know, you got to remember he was a puncher at 118, 115, those weights. But as he's moved up to the featherweight division, 126, he's in with bigger men now. And then also getting old, like you mentioned, you know, the lighter weights, a lot of those guys, they peak when they're younger. And, uh, you know, big in with the bigger man tonight. Cuellar's last four fights have been here in the United States. Made his dues, fighting for the most part at small venues in Argentina. He has got to a, another level with major matchups here in the United States. What is his last nine fights? And this is a different type of style for Vic. He's used to being the bull in the ring. He's used to being the guy who comes forward and really being strong. And, uh, you know, you see with Cuellar, he's definitely the stronger fighter. And Vic is, is not used to being pushed back like that. No knockdown. No knockdown. Come here. Come here. That was a slip. Let's go. Fox. Darkinian walked into that left hand. Boyar says sometimes he fights with too much emotion, needs more patience. And uh, says he needs to be less. The Cuellar versus Darchinian bout, and a very good one early on, BJ. It was the power of Cuellar coming forward. Darchinian, though, not backing down at all. Yeah, he's not backing down too much, Todd, but I think that might be a bad strategy. I think he's got to stay on the outside and try to box and not try to force the action whenever Cuellar catches him with a good shot because he's clearly not as big as Cuellar and it doesn't have the same size or strength. 
Jesus Cuellar, the 28-year-old out of Buenos Aires, Argentina, put in a good show here early on, early afternoon fight card here in Southern California. Let's take a look back at uh, round number one, which you saw on NBC Sports being called no, guys, by out, Marv no, Albert and Sugar Ray Leonard and Vic Darchinian connecting on that overhand left. Yeah, it was a nice shot by Darchinian. One of the few shots that he landed in that round, but a quality shot. Big overhand left. Vic's always been known for his left-hand power. He likes to club with that shot. Uh, but once again, he's moved up to the featherweight division now. He's no longer at the bantamweight and the flyweight division. So, uh, you know, it's a different style of fight that he needs to look to adapt if he wants to be successful and competitive at this, uh, at this new featherweight division. BJ, when we spoke with uh, Vic Garcini and the Raging Bull, he said his opponent's weaknesses, he said he was going to use angles to slow him down, and he said, quite frankly, I'm going to knock him out. Well, I think Vic always goes into every fight looking for the knockout. He's uh, he's he's kind of patting himself after his big left hand right. big punches, but, you know, Cuellar is technically sound. He's moving forward. He's very aggressive, and you can see the type of temperament he has. He's not going to stop. He's going to keep working forward, and Vic's got to catch him where he makes, uh, where he makes some mistakes. I'm going, Rick. Look out of it. This is round three of 12. Cuellar in the white trunks. Archinian in the red and black. We got two southpaws facing each other here, Todd. Both guys working from the southpaw stance, and you know, both guys were very successful from that side. How much do you put into the Darchinian at 39 years of age? I mean, he still looks in fantastic shape, and since his condition has never been better, going up against a guy that's 11 years younger. Um, you know, Vic's got a lot of experience, so even though he might not have the same speed or strength or size, he has been in a lot of big fights, mm -hmm. and he knows how to get the most out of his physical abilities. So the thing that I really worry about more than anything is just the physical size. He's not used to fighting at the 126-pound division, and as you can see, when you look at both men in the ring, there's a big size difference. Yeah. Darchinian in this is 49th professional fight. Cuellar, this is 28th professional fight. Young man out of Buenos Aires, just 28 years of age, 5'6", 126 ready pounds for Cuellar in the white bull trunks. Nice left hand by Vic as Cuellar was trying to come in. And those types of spots, that's where Vic can really catch Cuellar. When he's getting a bit too aggressive, a little bit too much over his front foot, meaning he's he's coming in without, a, you know, setting punches off of his jab. Opinion, DJ, does Darchinian have the knockout power to take down someone like Cuellar? Uh, I don't know if he does. I think he can catch him with a couple oh, shots and knock him out. I don't know with one punch if he can do it or not, but don't he's got to start somewhere, Todd. And that lead left hand whenever Cuellar is out over his front foot is a good start. Nice left hand again. Cuellar is the current featherweight champion, WBA, the foreigner, Jesus El Forastero Cuellar. Vic Darchinian, actually a man of many countries, living here in the United States Stop. right no now, points. originally from Armenia, also a citizen of Australia, a man of many feats, a renaissance kind of guy. Breaking news, Sugar Ray Leonard out of retirement and picks up yet another victory over Vic Darchinian in a hotly contested ping pong match early this morning here in Carson as we get back to fighting action live here on NBCSN. Round four of 12, Cuellar in the white trunks, Darchinian in the blue and, the, excuse me, the red and black. You can see Ray still got that hand-eye coordination, yep. very uh, sharp with his eyes, and you know, you can't win all those titles and all those championships without uh, being coordinated, so Ray still got it. Ray get the gun in a Dolce Gabbana suit as well, even in the track suit. Looking sharp. The player is really starting to do some damage to Darchinian here at the beginning of this third round. Had a good first two rounds, but he upped his tempo and his pressure even a little more at the start of the third time. Stats coming in through three rounds. Cuellar has thrown more than double the punches of Darchini. Does that surprise you, BJ? Uh, no, because he's a workhorse. He's the kind of type of guy who you know, likes to come forward, work his left hand, his right hook, dig the body shots, and Darchini is standing right there and, you know, not so quick to retreat. So Vic's style makes for a very entertaining matchup with a fighter like Cuellar. Fans love the featherweights. They work at a very high pace, but this is scheduled for 12 rounds, and Cuellar is throwing punches in bunches. Does fatigue and fitness worry you at all for either of these fighters? Um, I think it would on the side of Darchinian, just because he's a smaller guy, and if he gets pushed around too much, the fatigue can definitely set in quicker than it would. 
Under 90 seconds to go here in round four. This was scheduled for 12. We check in now ringside with Daniel Jacobs. Well, you know, it's funny that you guys mentioned fatigue because I'm in Quayon's corner right now, and they want him to box a little bit just to wear and tear down Darchinian because they want to wear down that power that he has, and they want to push him back, being that Quayon is the bigger and stronger fighter. But right now, they want him to use his boxing skills and circle the ring and box this guy because they feel like he is the bigger puncher, the better boxer, and he just has to execute the game plan. Darchinian just landed a huge overhand left that actually staggered Quayotar. Vic Darchinian coming on at 39 years of age, drops the hands momentarily, but launching that big left hand, stopping Cuellar in his tracks. Beautiful shot from Darchinian there, and he's showing, you know, even as he moves up in weight, this is very rare, he's carrying his power. So, you know, the corner of Cuellar very intelligently saying, hey, box more this round because Vic, Vic can still land that big left hand. DJ Ewing, Dan, to know so well. We talk about the novelty as that left connects one more time. And Cuellar, hands going down, stunned momentarily. Darchinian coming forward. Vic's got him in trouble with that left hand, Todd. He's really starting to find the range for it. And you can tell Cuellar's a little hurt because you can tell his punches have actually slowed down a little bit. Everything's in uh, slow motion. Good round for Vic. Fifth round when we return. California here and Carson at the Stub Hub as we go back and take a look at this last round. And it's Cuellar who took the beating. Look, Vic Darchinian finding it with his left, BJ. Yeah, Cuellar was cruising right along there, and Vic Darchinian found the home for that signature left hand multiple times and uh, staggered uh, Cuellar. So at the start of round number five, this one's scheduled for 12. Featherweight championship. It's Cuellar in the white trunks. Darchinian out of Armenia by way of Australia in the black and red. And Cuellar's corner intelligently told him, hey, listen, you know, work behind your jab. Box him a little more. Let's soften Vic Darchinian up. We know he can punch with the left hand. Let's not let him beat us with that only weapon that he really has. This might be a true test of patience for both fighters as the featherweights, as we said, work at a very high rate of speed. Now, can Darchinian sit back now and be patient, make Cuellar come to him and then set up that left again? And that's going to be the key, Todd, if he can, you know, stay in this fight, stay back, stay patient, follow his game plan. He can't stay on the same type of pace of Cuellar, so he's got to pick his spots. And whenever he hurts Cuellar the next time, he's really got to get aggressive and see if he can get him out of it. Cuellar needs to continue to mix his attack up and down, attack Vic's body. When he gets inside, be physical with him. Put his forearm on him, push him around, because Vic is definitely feeling the pace of this fight so far. Darchinian now starting to dance around a little bit. Same kind of moves he showed earlier today in the ping pong match against Sugar Ray Leonard. While we have a break, we check in with Daniel Jacobs ringside. Well, guys, Team Darchinian just had a phenomenal round last round. And tell me, do you... What is the game plan? Is, is this how he should execute the fight? Boxing. He just have to box him, get him out of his plane, whatever he's doing. He thinks he's going to go forward on him and just get him to the ring, to the, to the rope, and give it to him. This is going to change. They change it all over for him. Right. All right, guys. Edmund Tarverdian, Vic Darchinian's training. You agree with what he's saying? Um, you know, I think he's got a box, but I don't think he's going to be able to stay on the outside yeah. and just, you know, completely have all of his moments on the outside. But the goal should be for him to outbox him, stay on the outside. Don't let the bigger Cuellar get to him. But he's going to have moments where he's going to get in there and fight, and he's just got to land that left hand when he does. Does Vic Darchinian, having the success that he had in rounds three and four, feel like, you know, if I can pick off a round or two here and there, I've done enough that I can get this fight if it does go to the judges? Um, I'm not sure what's going on in the mind of Vic, but he can't be too upset with where he's at so right. far. You know, maybe he lost the first two or three rounds, but he had moments in round four. And, you know, with that type of power, as long as you can connect, you're always in the fight. He's got the experience, Todd. History could be made today here in Carson at the Stub Hub. Darchinian bidding to become the first to win titles at 112, 115, and 126 pounds in boxing history. So that would be huge. But a lot to do until then. We've got six more rounds to play out here in Carson. Well, training's been going fantastic. Everything's been, you know, geared around 
getting ourselves ready for a very tough and difficult opponent. And Babu Shumanov, uh, a former world champion, they don't give those belts away. So <laughs> it's something I'm looking forward to, and it's a great opportunity for me and uh, ready to get in there. Wearing two hats now as an analyst as well as still an active fighter. Does coming to the fights here at Premier Boxing Champions and working as your role as an analyst help you as a fighter in the ring? I think it does. You know, just being around boxing more, just, yeah. you know, being making myself more familiar with uh, you know things that fighters need to do to win fights I can apply it in my own career and you know hopefully on June 20th when I get in that ring uh, you know everyone's gonna see the results of that so it's gonna be a great fight and I'm definitely looking forward to it rumor has it that Daniel Jacobs is on his winning streak because of his work here at Premier Boxing Champions <laughs> that's strong Round 6 of 12, 2.22 to go as we bring in Steve Farhood on his unofficial scorecard. Steve, how do you see this one between Cuellar and Darchinian at this point? I think it's a pretty close fight. Uh, Cuellar's landed more punches, thrown a lot more punches, but Darchinian's left hand, the old war horse, still has something left in him. And I gave him rounds 1 and 4, 1 being close, 4 being clear for Darchinian, and that's kept him in the fight. Steve Farhood sitting ringside here with us at the stub hub center at carson california premier boxing champions the novelty of fighting in the middle of the day in california outside bj has certainly worn off both these fighters have got a good sweat going on here and probably not even concerned about what's happening but the temperature not nearly as warm as we thought it was going to be and a nice breeze still blowing no it's perfect i was just thinking that when you mentioned that todd how nice the weather yeah. is right now you know the fighters got to be loving feeling that cool breeze coming through you know around six seven eight fatigue can start to set in so having a breeze like that having fresh air instead of an arena air where it's all just sitting there it's uh you know it makes it nice for the fighters temperature at 72 very comfortable degrees and an onshore breeze coming off the pacific no truth to the rumor that bj flores will be cross training a surfboard later today at huntington beach <laughs> i actually love to surf todd i'm not very good at it but i, I do enjoy it It'll get you in the water coming up on a minute to go here this is round six of 12 Featherweight belt on the line, Jesus player on the white and gold trunks, and Vic Darchinian in the black and red. Pace slowing down just a little bit in this one, BJ, as we approach 50 seconds to go. Does a higher pace in your mind favor Cuellar in this fight? I think it does because that's how he's going to have a better shot of tiring out Darchinian. Darchinian, when he's got a little space to operate, he can really pick his pick his shots and land that left hand uh, uh, with a little more time, and that's what he needs in a fight like this. When Cuellar is constantly smothering him, sure. constantly pushing him back, it's tough for Vic to set his feet and to be able to land that, that left hand. So it's giving him a little more opportunity to pick his spots. We're talking about the history that Darchinian is going for. He's had two fights at StubHub Center here in Carson. He's had two KOs at StubHub. So he told us yesterday that's something he'd like to keep going, make it three, and get the knockout over Cuellar here at the end of round number six. This one's scheduled for 12. We'll be back with much more from Carson. Here in Carson, we approach round number seven between Jesus Cuellar back. and Vic Darchinian. Let's go, box. 39-year-old Darchini in the red and black trunks telling us yesterday, he says, I'm stronger, I'm physically stronger than my opponent, and my experience will slow him down. And that's when he got into the talk about knocking him out, already having two knockouts here at the StubHub Center in Carson. You know, there's no question that he's stronger than Darchinian, but as far as the experience and how it plays out, you know, Vic's got, you know, 47 fights. Yeah. So the experience edge doesn't necessarily go to Cuellar, and I think, you know, you get in a situation where you're so much looking forward to those bigger fights on the road. Mares and Santa Cruz, those guys that Cuellar definitely right. wants to fight. Sometimes you overlook a 39-year-old Vic Darchinian, and you can get surprised a little bit. So it could be what's happening tonight. Does the description crafty apply well to Darchinian, the way he's fighting in the latter part of his career? Absolutely. Very, very intelligently. You know, he knows what he can do and what he can't do, and he's using those things to his advantage. Not to say that Cuellar still isn't winning this fight, most likely, but, you know, Vic is definitely keeping himself in the fight, and with there that big left hand, you know, things can change really quickly. Steve Harhood bringing to my attention at the halfway mark. Cuellar throwing and landing more punches. Darchinian landing, though, at a higher percentage. And we talk about Darchinian's age, not to bring him down at 39 years of age, but he talked about using table tennis and some other sports for eye coordination. And if you missed it on the undercard, the big bout today, really Sugar Ray Leonard coming out of retirement to take on Darchini in a ping pong match, which he won, which is some fantastic footage. I'm sure that's going viral as we speak. <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel like Vic really had a chance to warm up on that uh, on that ping pong match because it seemed like Sugar Ray got him out of there pretty quick, Todd. Ray said five and out, done. 
115 to go here in round number seven. We check in once more time with Daniel. Well, guys, I'm here with Robert Garcia, Cuellar's trainer. And earlier, Robert, you told me that the game plan was to box a little bit, wear and tear him down, to get him tired. How do you feel about the game plan thus far? Well, look, the game plan after the first round, when, when we got dropped, you know, I wanted him to box a couple of rounds, a couple of rounds, and get, get his rhythm back and get his legs back. That's why I told him to box a little. Then, then two rounds later, he got, he got hurt again. So that's why we need him to box a little bit in the, in the next couple of rounds. But he's, he's strong man. But when he makes mistakes, that's when he gets caught, and he, he's been hurt twice. Well, seems like we have a very corner from Koya. We'll see how he, he does continue in this round, guys. Thank you very much, Daniel, in the corner of Jesus El Forastero Cuellar. And something, Todd, I found very interesting is Robert Garcia just said when he got knocked down in the first round, I don't believe the referee correctly ruled that a knockdown. So, you know, I think the corner of Garcia, they're thinking they might have got away with one right there. Daniel, you fought at a very high rate during your career as we approach the last 10 seconds here your thoughts on these fighters and how i think they'll go well i think these fighters are giving it their all i mean i think the, the tell and tell will be the deciding factor at the end of the fight who's the more hungrier fighter who's willing to lay it all on the line and, and, and go for the, i mean go for the kill i mean this is the dog fight dog fight indeed we will have the next round we're going for 12 scheduled here in carson on nbcsn Back in Carson, California, premier boxing champions. Todd Harris, B.J. Flores, Daniel Jacobs, Steve Fard and Steve Smoger here with us ringside on a very comfortable afternoon here in Southern California. This is round number eight of 12. I got it. I got the break. And it might be comfortable for us out here, Todd, but I guarantee both guys in the ring are feeling the effects of this fight so far. Cuellar started strong. He's been hurt a couple times. Vic has been getting pushed around a little bit and bullied, so it's a uh, you know, very tough round, uh, point in the fight, especially in round eight, where both guys starting to exhaust and fatigue a little bit. The will of either fighter has got to come through right now because both guys are tired. Vic's in a lot of trouble here, Todd. Yeah, yeah. Show me something, Vic. Got to be careful. See the way he's breathing. In the corner, the corner of Darchinian stopping the fight. They want to stop it. Darchinian's corner's asking for the stoppage. The referee's not seen it. And now he'll stop it. As the towel was thrown, Darchinian's corner was calling for the stop. They saw something they did not like. I got you, buddy. And BJ, that was a strange turn of events. The corner men for Vic Darchini could not get the attention of the official. He had his back to them, and they were waving to shut it down. They saw something in his eyes. They did not want their fighter to continue. What normally happens is the corner will throw the towel. And, you know, whenever they stand up in the corner, it's automatically a disqualification, but the referee didn't see it. He was looking in the corner here. You got a towel. You can throw that white thing across all the way, and normally the referee sees that, and they'll stop the fight. But, you know, all right. The corner of Darchinian saw the right hook land. They saw their fighter wasn't able to continue. And I feel like they made the right call. Good yep. call and kudos to the credit of, uh, of Vic Darchinian. Cuellar threw that big shot that caught Darchinian. The legs went stiff and he just fell like a huge tree in the middle of the ring. Took the count, stood up, and you heard the official say, show me something, Vic. You got to show me something. And that's when his cornermen stood up. They wanted to stop the fight. Cuellar came in immediately and just pounced. And this is boxing, you know, this is a yeah. world championship fight. Two very high-level guys. These kinds of things happen in world championship fights. And give a tremendous credit to Vic Darchinian for being up to the, being up in the fight, you know, fighting well with Cuellar up to the eighth round. And just very good stuff from both guys. you got to give Cuellar a huge uh, congratulations for stopping the very game, Vic Darchinian. Let's go back and look at what started it all, the turn of events with Cuellar coming forward, being very aggressive here in this round. You see a nice right hook. Vic is kind of skating out, and the right hook and the power of Cuellar shows there. He came back. Always when you shoot the left hand, you always want to come back with the right hook. Caught Vic right on the chin. There's another look at it right there. And, you know, Vic's just a smaller man. He fought such an intelligent fight up to this point. And here was the end of the fight. At this point, the towel is being thrown there. Corner men for Vic Darchinian and the official cued in on what was happening. He saw the eyes of Darchinian. He shut this thing down. And I don't even think he saw the corner. I think the referee was just taking a good look at Vic and he jumped in when he thought was right. But the corner of Darchinian was already up yep. and the fight should have been stopped a bit earlier uh, based on what the corner wanted. 
But nevertheless, a great win for Cuellar. Yeah. You got to give him credit, and uh, he's looking forward to bigger challenges from Santa Cruz and Mars. They were taking a peek here at the punch. The overhand left of Cuellar, the speed that it came, 23 miles per hour, very consistent to what Aaron Martinez was punching in the last uh, last fight, 24 miles per hour, but it's the timing and the placement of those shots definitely affected Victor Chinian wearing his man down and getting him out of there. And Cuellar improved to 27 and 1, 10 straight since his only defeat. We'll have the official decision when we return.